Hello everyone, I'm Morgan and today I wanted to talk to you about five books I've read recently. Uh, so as always I'm going to go from the one I like the least to the one I like the most. So the one I liked the least was The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I listened to this one in audiobook and I would recommend it, it was nice to listen to. Um, so if you haven't heard about this book, but I think you have, uh, this is about uh, Monique who goes to interview this um, huge actress, Evelyn Hugo, um, that has never given uh, that many interviews in the last few years. She's uh, like 70 now and she wants to tell her story to Monique, uh, who is a journalist. And so uh, it's a lot just about um, Evelyn Hugo's life and her seven husbands because she was married seven times. And there's bisexual rap in it, which I did enjoy as I am bisexual. Um, but the thing is, unlike in uh, Taylor Jenkins Reid's next uh, last book, uh, Daisy and Jones and the Sex, where the the way it was told, so in, in interview format of the band that was the center of the book, uh, this format just didn't work that much. Um, Monique interviewing because honestly, it's just who cares about Monique? Like it's not that I don't like her. Uh, but she wasn't essential to the story whatsoever. Um, you get a hint since the beginning of the book that Monique has some kind of link to the story of Evelyn Hugo and what she's telling, and you get to see that at the end. But, like, honestly, who cares? Um, it just, it could have been told just in an a general way like any any other book and it would have been fine. I think the the strong points in this book are um, Evelyn Hugo's character and uh, and this story and it just didn't require this format at all and um, it's not just that like the writing also was a bit too on the nose like telling you stuff instead of showing you and it was just not that great uh as i said i loved evelyn Hugo's character i think she's great and um the story i felt was quite touching but yeah it just it didn't give me like the the tears like daisy jones and the six did i i don't know it just didn't work that much for me uh, the second book I want to talk about, I actually own, and it is, no, uh, it is The Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss. I buddy read this with Pauline from Dancing Lawn, I will link to her channel down below, and it was really nice. Um, I honestly don't think I would have gotten uh, through the first 50 pages without her, because I really didn't enjoy the writing at first. Um, the thing is, this book is about, um, it's about growth. Um, I'm not sure how you pronounce that, he does say it in the beginning, but it's kind of hard to pronounce. Uh, but anyway, we have our main character, um, that is telling his story, and so he goes back in time and tells us about, um, how he grew up and all that. And the thing is, the bits in the present, so when he's older, are told in third-person narrative um, with an um, omniscient narrator, and I hate omniscient narrators with a passion, unless they're part of a fairy tale, uh, because it's just to me saying like, I know something you don't, and I'm like, <laughs> yeah i know but like i want to know and the point of a book is to tell me not to tell me like ah, i know and you don't it's, it's just it's annoying to me and they sent narrators and the third person narrative also was like i don't know it's fine you know but like first person narrative to tell a story is better and that's how the parts in the past are told and after the first like 50 pages or so uh that's mostly what happens we're just in the story when he was a child and um so advancing in time you know 
and there's a magicals to cool in this uh, there's magic of course and the magic system is really cool and I like the story I love magical schools obviously and it's just it's really cool but I just I wasn't impressed with the writing to be honest I thought it had a lot of flaws and besides the narrator as I said um, there were just a few things that bugged me I can't really say exactly what uh, but overall the book there were just a few things that like ticked me but besides that I did really enjoy it and I am looking forward to the second book that I think I'm going to read sooner rather than later and I also like it's clearly the trope of the chosen one and sometimes it was kind of annoying because it's not that our main character doesn't um, go through hard things, he does, but even those hard things he just manages to go through so a bit too easily for me and I was like, what? And so when you go back to the present, he's sometimes quite arrogant in my opinion and I hate arrogant people even though, again, he... It's kind of, you can see why he's arrogant because he does, he, like, he's very capable, but still, like, sometimes he just annoys me, uh, but mostly it's still quite an enjoyable read and I would recommend this book. Uh, the third book I want to talk about is Good Almonds by Terry Pratchett and Neil Gaiman, which I have here. The cover is gorgeous, I love it, and... Uh, this book is kind of um, a satire of the chosen one uh, because it's about um, it's about this guy. So basically, it's about the end of the world, and there's uh, there's this kid who is the son of the devil, and he's supposed to bring the end of the world, um, and Normally he was uh, exchanged at birth and they were supposed to follow him during all of his life until uh, Armageddon and just see what happens at that time. Uh, but so we followed to a an angel and a devil, Crowley and Arizafali, I'm not sure how you pronounce that. And um, they didn't really do a good job so in the end they didn't follow the right kid. And so they have to find him now uh, before the end of the world comes and so they can be there and guide him and it's just it's just so funny like I, I wouldn't say everyone would like this because you just have to like the humor or you don't uh, but I really did like the humor in this uh, it was just stupid at times but in the best way um, and yeah, and I can't wait to see the TV show that came out recently. And yeah, I don't know. It was just it was just so much fun. And yeah, I just I liked it. Uh, the fourth book I want to talk about is Station Eleven, which I I which it fell. Okay, here. This book, uh, Station Eleven by Emily St. John Mandel. Uh, this was in my five stars predictions and though it was not five stars it was like 4.5 so i think that's fair um i really enjoy this one it's set in this world where um suddenly a disease comes and uh, most of the population on earth dies and we follow the survivors um but like it's not only told in the future when all of this is, has happened uh, it goes back in time sometimes to uh, bo like 10 years before uh, the the event and then after it like very close to it and then later you know it just it goes back in time between timelines and we follow different characters and it was just really nice and so we follow the uh, different characters who are linked in some way. We follow a traveling symphony who are a group of actors that um, that act, act uh, Shakespearean plays 
and they go from city to city and just travel all year round uh, in the US and so it's really nice to see that uh, I like the characters and there's um, a girl that is part of this symphony uh, that we also see before the event uh, because she was a child actress and she was there when um, an actor who was older died and we followed the life of this actor uh, bef like 10 years before the events and just a lot of things going on uh, it's really nice like the, the pace is just really good um, coming back and going forward in time it just I don't know, I think it worked really well because it showed you very different things about the lives of these people and I didn't think any of the parts in the book were boring so I didn't mind like going back in time instead of just getting, you know, the, the end of the story right away. I just, I really enjoyed this book, I just, um... I'm not sure exactly what bothered me, it's just that I didn't think it was perfect in some way. I guess it could have been better even. Um, but I really, really liked it and um, like I said, it was still 4.5 stars, like a really good book. And obviously it's a dystopia and I love dystopia so much. And yeah, just a really good read. And the last book I want to talk about is Starside by Brendan Sanderson. This book just came out and I listened to it on audiobook. Uh, Susie Jackson narrates it and honestly she's one of the best narrators ever uh, and she's perfect for this story. So uh, Starside is the second book in the Skyward series. I don't know how many books there are gonna be but for now there are two and Skyward came out last year at the end of last year and it's about this girl, Spensa, who wants to be a pilot but people won't let her because her dad is said to be a traitor because uh, when there was this big battle um, against uh, the, the crowd, the people that are fighting the aliens, and he turned against his camp and since then he died and all his family have been shunned quite and so no one wants to let her become a pilot but she's de determined and um, so she gets to be a pilot and uh, she goes to flight school and it's so cool uh, like it's just so great for one just to be in the plane and all the flying is just amazing it's just it's really intense and um, and exciting and I love the characters in the book also because she meets a lot of people of course in flight school uh, she gets some friends and she also has a friend who uh, becomes an engineer that she's had for a while and um, we also have Mbot uh, which is a ship that can talk because it's artificial intelligence and the ship is quite funny and we also have Doomslug who is um, a sm quite small animal like this, uh, a bob that, um, that is all yellow and makes little noises it's just it's just so nice um to listen to and i love the first book and i also love the second book it, it they're very different from each other because we well continue um and we get more into the world and we see other things in the second book which is always really nice because i find that some series just kind of take the same formula than the first book and just try to continue with that but the best series don't do that every book is different and that's what's been happening in this series so far um, the first book was great and was mostly focusing on how uh, they're trained and all that but the second book just goes somewhere else and I loved it so much too and we get to meet new characters and it's just as exciting as the first one especially like after a four for the half of the book it gets even more exciting and just there are so many things in this series and it's just it's so cool i would really highly recommend it if you haven't tried it yet and if you like science fiction uh but yeah 
just a really really cool book like I would say I like um, books that focus more on characters but like these focus on characters but have also like a, a huge amount of action and that's just perfection to me uh, like same with the bone season series like it's very character focused but it's also full of action and that's just that's just the best honestly so yeah highly highly recommend if you haven't checked it out uh, but yeah, that's all for me. Thank you for watching. Please tell me if you've read any of these books and what you've thought of them. Or if you want to read them now or what you've been reading. Just tell me all the things. Uh, but that's all for me. Thank you for watching. I hope to see you soon. Goodbye. Dream I know, deep up my feelings, feelings.